Okay, so let's get this show on the road. We are going to make seed cake. The favorite afternoon tea time cake of hobbits everywhere, um, or at least some of them. So the first part of this operation involves um, beating together butter and sugar. Now the butter, I think that's about three quarters. Um, I'll never get it out of the bowl with this, right? Um, about three quarters of a cup of softened butter. Gee, it's not very softened anymore, is it? Hmm. I think it's going to get uh, 10 seconds in the microwave, so let's just let it have that. Okay, there we go. So this is, um, I believe it's about three quarters of a cup of butter in, in the neighborhood of that. It's a little bit melty at the moment because it's just been in the microwave. An Irish kitchen is not a good place for butter to stay soft. Okay, now what it's going to get to do is be creamed together with the sugar you just saw me dump in there. And uh, because it's going to make the devil's own racket, I'm just going to start it going and then I'm going to get off side. Pausing it a moment here because you have got to scrape this down two or three times during the creaming process to make sure that everything gets mixed evenly. I want you to know that this spatula spent like an hour and a half in a jug full of bleach and water and it is still yellow. I don't want you to think that this is my fault. I thought surely it will bleach itself a little bit clean. Will it F? No, it did not. Anyway, fine. So, in we go. Back into the, uh, the bowl again. I'm going to get the hang of this camera if it kills me. Cripes, what a racket. Anyway. If you hear a vague humming noise in the background, that's the oven having been turned on to uh, preheat. Now, see how that looks? That's, that's kind of nice. That, that's, that's fluffy enough. Ideally, you're supposed to do this until you can't really feel the granularity of the sugar in there, and I can't feel it, so... Mm. I love that stuff. Anyway, so that's pretty good. Let's put this aside for a moment. And I'll show you what needs to happen to the flour and the dry ingredients. Fine, let me just shove that over there. Out of my way. Right. So this is, um, I think it was two cups of flour, scant two cups of plain flour. So into that goes, right, anyway, this is a, a heaping teaspoon pushing two teaspoons, really, I get liberal with this stuff, of baking powder. If you're using cake flour or um, uh, cream flour, as they call it over here, you're going to get a better bake if you boost the baking powder a little bit. So, in we go. Um, in also goes a pinch of salt. That's an official pinch. Look, we even have a spoon that says so. Yeah, pinch. Right, in we go like I didn't know. Anyway, um, so that's fine. Uh, so, you know, just mix those together. I'm just using a measuring spoon to do this because it's what I had. Right. Just make sure it's evenly combined there. Um, when this gets mixed into the butter and sugar mixture, that's going to happen fairly quickly because, again, there's still gluten in this flour, and the less you toughen it, the tenderer your cake will be, and the higher it will rise on its bake. Um, right, there we go. 
It has to be said, I think I mentioned in the blog posting, Nigel Slater gets a little bit snippy about people who put too much caraway in their seed cake. Um, Nigel can go take a fly on one, you know. Um, I put in about three tablespoons full um, and maybe a bit more because I like caraway. If you are not a caraway person, I know people who do this with um, poppy seeds, and that's fine, Wh whatever rocks your jollies. Um, now, the other thing I'm going to do with this, because I can, is I think it improves the flavor of the seed cake a little bit if you grind some of these a little bit. You don't have to get obsessive about it, but just crush some of the caraway seeds to release the flavor. Um, I've dumped, it looks like about half of it in there. Um, fair enough. You know, more or less, just as pleases you. So in it goes. And in go the rest of them. And that's fine too. And now we stir that up a little bit. Some people actually sprinkle more caraway seeds on top of the seed cake when it goes into the oven. That, that's, you know, that's really your call. Okay, so... Now what goes in are the eggs, and I'm not going to try to speak to you while I'm beating these in. Expect this system to go a little bit curdly, this, this mixture to go a little bit curdly looking while you're working with it. This is perfectly normal. Um, it always breaks a little bit when the eggs go in first. This is the time to do your vigorous beating because once the flour goes in, you won't be able to do that anymore. So now we handle all the wet ingredients. Eggs first. Okay, that's me scraping this down. Yes, you just saw what you thought you saw. Yes, you saw me pick up an egg that fell on the counter and throw it back in the bowl. <laughs> Do I recommend this? No, not as a general thing. I especially don't recommend dropping the damn egg on the counter. Um, the counter is clean, I promise you. The egg was as sterile as the inside of an egg gets. My hands were, everything has been disinfected. Don't panic. Um, so now you see how that broke a little bit? That's entirely to be expected. So there we go. Don't drop the damn egg, really. Two tablespoons of milk and it goes. That's the only liquid this um, recipe actually has, the eggs and that little bit of milk and the vanilla extract, which is about to go in. Just bear with me there. Don't get me started. I'm going to tell you, don't at me. I'm going to tell you about the time Julia Child dropped the chicken. And it's pretty well mixed, that. Um, okay, so I'm just going to pour because I know how much I want in here. Just sort of a teaspoon-ish. Oh, that's the end of that bottle. Okay, fine. Um, and the other thing, oh gosh, I wish you guys could get this. Uh, you, you folks, excuse me, that's a habit I need to break. Um, this stuff is fabulous. This, is, this comes from Switzerland. And it is lemon zest puree. And it's really a terrific thing. Um, I don't know if anybody in the States is doing anything like this, but boy, they really should. Um, now, let me just throw this in there. I like to overdose this a little bit. We brought a lot home from the last time we went in Switzerland, and uh, this is really worth 
overusing. Um, good. So there's that. Where's the lid? Okay, so let's beat all those together. Seriously, what a racket. Um, okay, anything else I need to be paying attention to here? No, everything is in. So now we need the dry ingredients, and here is the flour and so forth. So I'm just putting that all in there. No need to be shy or gradual about it. Why should the phrase, don't be shy, come up around now? I can't imagine. And just very slow, you just want to combine it, right? Anything that would toughen this up is to be resisted. Okay, that's good. I just want to check the, the texture of that, but I, I'd say that's all right. Yeah, it's, it's a very soft... It's a very soft batter. Let's just not sloppy soft, but soft enough. Get in there. Right. One more stir just to combine. Yep, that's good. All right. Let me get it get this mostly in the bowl. Right. And now I'm going to attempt actually to get the damn bowl loose, which is often a difficulty, but no, that worked that time it worked for a change. All right, pausing here. Right. Now, here you see before you a springform pan which has been lined twice, once on the base and once interiorly, interiorly, it's a word now, um, with baking parchment, baking paper, which has also been liberally buttered. And the reason that's happened is because this pan leaks. I wanted a smaller springform pan than my normal big cheesecake pan for this, so that the cake would come up a little bit higher. And unfortunately, this pan leaks. Don't ask me why. But as you see, there's one level of lining that's been caught between the... Um, bottom of the, the pan and the sides and the other. This is glued in place with butter. Okay, think of it as an organic adhesive. Um, but it will stay in place in baking and please God, it, will, it won't leak. Oh God. Anyway, so now in goes the cake mixture. You see how that is? As I say, it's not a terribly sloppy batter. It's kind of clingy. Okay. And when you get it all in there, you smooth the top of it as best you can. Don't press it or, you know, more than you have to or get overly excitable about smooshing it down. It's actually already rising the moment the baking powder got hit with liquid. It, the rise began. So what you just want to do is rather gently push this stuff out to fill the pan. It should approximately double when it's baking, if things go well. This kind of baking always makes me a lot more nervous than bread baking. Bread, you know what it's going to do. I mean, the yeast, the new fossil record now tells us that yeast have been doing this work for a billion years. So they've got it down at this point. Baking powder or soda bakes are always a little bit more fraught for me. Anyway, that's close enough. See, just, just sort of smooched on top. You can also bake this in a loaf pan if you prefer. Um, I just prefer to do it the way Bilbo does it, you know? Right, so into the oven now. There we go. Isn't that nice? 